Hello everyone, my name is Phil Brown. Today I'm gonna to go over machine configuration and why it is so important to your workflow. With that said, I'm gonna walk you through how to use machine configuration as well, why you would want to use it even if you're not using machine simulation. So with that, let's go ahead and jump inside of Fusion and get to work. So now that we're inside Fusion 360, I'm gonna go ahead and switch from the design to the manufacturer workspace. Most of you are gonna notice I'm just using a blank file. It's not a big deal at the end of the day. But I'm going to go down to manage and inside manage, I'm going to go to the machine library. So what this is going to allow me to do is to actually go in and create my own machine to select in my setup. So the good news about this is you can do this for a mill turn machine, a lathe, or even a mill. You do not need machine simulation in order to do this. As you're going to see in the background here, I have this machine here for one of my good friends, Matt. Um, he actually needed a certain machine sim built out. I'm not gonna build a machine sim this time around. I'm actually just gonna hit the plus sign and I'm gonna say milling. And I'm just gonna call this, you know, let's just say this is my bench top mill. And with that being said, we could move down. Again, you guys could add more to these categories or a photo of your machine if you like. But the main thing you want to do is plug in the real data about your machine if you have it. So in the case of this machine, maybe I only have 19 tools. Again, my max feed rate on here is 250 inches per minute. These are all variables here that are gonna alarm me out if my tool path or for example, my tool number gets outside of that range. The most important part here is gonna be setting up your kinematics properly. So I do get a ton of questions when it comes down to adding an actual fourth axis or a fifth axis, or you know, getting the post-processor modified for what I wanna do. At the simplest level, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we have our X, Y, Z all orientated the right way. And in this case, they're built off of one another. So I may want to arrange this because my X and my Y are on the same platform, which would be the base of my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a static part. And then what that static part is gonna allow me to do is kind of to build off of that. So again, is now my Z axis. We're gonna go ahead and pull it out of there. So I have my static base, my X and Y axis, and then my table, and then my Z axis goes up and down again off that static base, and my actual head of my machine is attached to my Z axis. Well, now what if I wanted to add a fourth axis to my table? So this is where we can do it. So we can go in and we can add a rotary axis, and I'm gonna actually drag this guy up and I'm gonna attach it to my Y axis, which is attached to my X, of course. And now I can go through, and again, I can modify this as much or as little as I want. Again, for a lot of you, I always get that question, do you know positive tilt versus negative tilt? I want it to tilt towards me so I can see what I'm doing the first time. So maybe I go in and I actually say I want positive tilt only. In the case of my machine, I don't have TCP, which is tilted coordinates plane. Uh, that being said, we can go down and we could actually start to set things up more. So. This is gonna wrap around the X. Again, I get this question a lot from people. You know, my A axis is mounted, kind of pointing towards the operator. It actually goes around the Y axis. This is how I can configure and control that at the end of the day. Another thing that I could do is if I actually set this to custom, and this is again, a very big question I get a lot of times, is I want it to go around the X axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the number one there. Now, if I want it to go reversed, all I have to do is plug in a negative one. Again, that allows that access to tilt on the, around the X axis in either a positive or a negative fashion. So if you've ever machined something and you've had it actually come out completely backwards or so to say mirrored, that's where you're seeing that positive versus negative number. And this is where you can change that integer. Again, same thing as we could actually tell it, I want to always tilt in the negative once I get my direction set properly. Again, moving a little further down here, a lot of this additional stuff you're not gonna use if you're not using machine simulation. We don't need to compensate where the access location is. And then your collision settings, again, aren't gonna make a difference because we're not actually using a physical model. But the nice thing is, is as you saw, I added in my A axis right here and I'm controlling it through the machine definition menu of the kinematics. So if I go to post-process now, there's actually a great way if you guys wanna test this out, you can go to the Fusion 360 library. You can grab just about any post nowadays. So in this case, I'm gonna go with a simple Haas post. 
actually we could go ahead and see if we can pull something a little bit more weird here and see what we can get so i'm going to go ahead and scroll down so i have a sile machine post so we're going to go ahead and grab that and what this is doing is moving that post processor over and now you'll see my post processor is attached to my bench mill kind of configuration so again we could go through our additional settings there's not a lot here again if you want more accurate machine times you could change your feed ratio your tool change times and then in the event you are using multi-access there's a lot of things that you can adjust even further the retract and reconfigure is one of the best ones if you don't have a true cyclitic kind of c-axis where you can only spin it so far more commonly on a head head machine versus a table table but this is where you set that all up so now that we have that actually set inside of the software, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a very generic part and show you how this is gonna work. So the idea here is, is we do want a part that is gonna be based off of a fourth axis kind of motion, and we wanna be able to spin it around center just to check that it works. So as you're seeing me do here, I'm just gonna create a real simple flat. This is a lot of guesstimate type stuff. So we could just get something to create a tool path on wrapped around this cylinder. So if I go back to manufacture and I create my setup, you're gonna see here I can select my machine. So this is where I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna grab that bench mill with that Sile Syntec post. And then from that, I'm gonna go down and just do my normal workflow. We're doing milling. I wanna set my Z and my X. My Z is gonna be based off of the flat, not that plane. And my X is gonna be around my cylinder. I would also like to set this as a selected point so that I can wrap it around that center point on my machine. So again, as I'm actually gonna go down here to the other end and I like to use the face of my part regardless of if I have a probe, it allows me to come with that edge finder, find it very easily. Now, if I had a stop in the back of my machine or in the back of my rotary axis, that would be what I would use again. So my stock is just gonna be a fixed size cylinder. We want to wrap it around a selected axis and away we go so as you can see here i now have my cylinder i have my material wrapped around my part and for demonstration purposes let's just go ahead and do a simple 2d contour and we're just going to give this a very simple two inch face mill as you can see this part is dramatically bigger than what i'm actually trying to achieve but as you can see here i'm just cutting across that part my Z orientation is up. We never did any tool orientation yet. But the reason for that is, is because I want to make sure that we are posting out A axis motions. So as you can see here, it's giving me my machine. It's automatically pulling my post processor and everything. And then based on that machine, you're gonna notice here that some of the posts do have the ability to turn on an A axis or not to turn on an A axis. Right here, I don't have an A axis or a B axis control. I have no rotary options in the post. However, the cool thing is, is because we actually set it up with the machine definition, it's going to create my A axis automatically for me. So let's go ahead and pull up that G code here. Let me get reposition. And as we scroll down through here, you're gonna notice I actually have my A zero. Again, we're just testing this out to make sure that we sit with an A axis motion plugged into my post. So let's go back and make a change now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna edit and I'm gonna make my Z axis based on this edge. And then I'm going to flip it towards me as the operator. Now, when I go into do my 2D contour, I'm gonna do my tool orientation and I'm gonna select my Z axis to be up here. Again, keeping my X axis always pointed the same way because we're only doing fourth axis work. So again, we're gonna start from a A0 position. We're gonna rotate A90 degrees and then we're just gonna make that cut. So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna post process. And again, I'm not changing anything in that menu. However, you do change some of those settings you're more than capable of based on your machine configuration. But now we're getting an A90 rotation. Again, if you saw under the multi-axis area, I also get my M11 and my M10 clamp codes. So this is the great thing about being able to do minimal work to customize your own post, and you no longer have to pay somebody to do a lot of this. So let's go back and make a few more changes. So again, as that came out A90 positive, that might not be correct for my machine. So I'm gonna go into my machine here at my setup and I'm gonna edit it. 
Again, the nice thing with the cloud and the way everything works is this will push the data back and forth between Fusion 360 and your most recent version of this machine configuration. So everybody always gets the latest and greatest. So again, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to post-process again. And this time we should actually be getting a A270. Again, it's still a positive integer. However, instead of being a 90, we're technically a negative 90 now. So as you can see, I can toggle that on, toggle that off as needed. Also, if I go in again one last time here, we're gonna go ahead and edit that machine one more time. I'm gonna go to the kinematics, my A axis, and in this case, I always want to be, you know, positive tilt, or I have no preference on tilt. Keep in mind that this is a limited range here. So if we actually go to an unlimited or a cyclic, unlimited means it will spin to any integer 10 million plus. Cyclitic will actually allow me to pause momentarily in between. But we're going to just say this is unlimited. It's an A axis. I don't have any vacuum hoses in my way. Again, we go back and we post process. And this time I'm actually gonna say no clamp codes based on this. And let's hit yes. And as you can see, again, we're now getting an A negative 90. Again, manipulating that additional access all while using machine configuration. I never actually opened the post and changed my post processor. All I did was use machine definition, configured my kinematics on my machine, and I added an A access based on those kinematics. Again, I could add an A, B, A, C, B, C configuration at any time and validate these results. So as always, guys, I mean, I just wanted to make a quick video to help you all out. And so I get tons of questions about adding accesses to post processors all the time. And the truth is, guys, you can do this on your own. If you don't want to do it on your own, though, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to do it. There's a actual link down in my bio for being able to put in support questions and information. That being said, as always, please like, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and leave a comment if you guys didn't like this content. I would love to hear what you guys would like to see or what your opinions are on the different things out there so that we can make better content for the community. That said, have a great rest of your day.